Well, before you watch this video, let me at least explain what it's all about because it's not supposed to be a product review. I have no experience in heaters like this. I just wanted to try one out for myself. So these are my experiments, observations, and conclusions. They may not be what you're looking for, but hopefully you'll get a few ideas out of it anyway. So the first part of it was the unboxing. Now, I know a lot of people get some really good deals on these. I didn't. What do we got? Oh, we got a little flask for whiskey. That'll be handy. Or I guess you could also use it for a muffler. Uh, looks like an air filter, some brackets little remote. Okay, now we had to do some lifting here. <laughs> Hard to do it when you're just by yourself, but here we go. Uh, exhaust. Uh, I think that's a uh, air intake hose. So where is the heater hose? Oh, heater hose under here. Not very big, I'll have to work on that. But you guessed it, it's a diesel heater. Well, most people know that when you buy a small camper like this, especially if you live in a northern climate, you'll already have an onboard heater and this particular one has a propane furnace. Propane is stored right up front and it works well. It does keep my trailer warm. However, in the winter time, it's a little bit more of a challenge. And the reason being, it's not the fuel it consumes, it's the amount of electricity. Because I tend to camp off grid and for longer periods of time. I can only use the electricity I can produce. And I produce my electricity from these two solar panels. So I was looking for something that wasn't just such a pig on electricity. Now most of you know I do have another option, something that not only produces heat, but it actually produces electricity as well. But I don't want to use that all the time. That's why I was looking for a third option. And what I was looking for is something that would heat my trailer, at least keep it above freezing, but not demand a lot of electricity. That is why I wanted to try a diesel heater. But it's not that simple because most of what I'd seen other people use is something that you have to install. I don't want to install anything in my camper. I only want it to be temporary and I don't want to put holes in the floor and all these other things. I want it to only have a minimal impact on the design of this camper. I wanted something portable. I wanted something temporary and that's why I tried this particular heater. Well now that I have it out of the box, let's assess exactly what it is I do have. And I think most people have guessed it. It's an all-in-one diesel heater for heating the inside of a truck and in some cases an RV. It's made in China and this one in particular is made by a company called Happy Buy. To be a little more specific, it's a 5 kilowatt car parking heater model XMZD2 made in China. But let's find out right now what is in this box. As I'm just going to open it up, there's four clips. Okay, it should just come right off. I think I've got to open it up a little bit. Whoa. Oh. 
Okay, so it's got, it's got the diesel heater in, underneath. It's got the tank. It's got a controller. Um, here's the heating outlet here. There's the pump is right here. And then it goes to the heater. There's uh, two wires and a fuse. So I've put it back together again. Hopefully it's a little bit more secure. I do feel the case is flimsy and needs additional support. And I can do that myself if I have to. However, the next step is I've got to make sure this is actually working. I'm going to do a bench test to see if it actually produces heat. I've got my Jackery I'm going to use as my power supply and I've uh, charged it up to 100%. So I've got some fuel. I'm going to turn on the power here on my Jackery and I'm going to press this button. See if anything happens. Well, it's been running for 10 minutes. That air is really hot. It's far too hot. I've got to figure out how to use this uh, controller. See if I can reduce it, reduce the fan. It's been constantly blowing and pumping fuel. Does it heat? Seems it does. Is it operating properly? I don't know. Now, my, the way I wanted to do it with my camper, which is a little bit different than some people, is it's not going to be an integral part of my camper. As a matter of fact, it's not even going inside. I, don't, I do not want this thing in my camper. It's going to take up space. It's going to produce some noise. How much? I'll find out. But I can also not, I do not like the smell of diesel. I can't stand it as a matter of fact. I don't want the smell of diesel, even the smallest amount, in my camper. So it'll be outside. My concept is quite simple. This goes outside the camper. I vent the hot air into the camper and there's an outlet for 12 volt outside the camper as well. So it never needs to go inside. Then I can see how well it heats under those circumstances. It's going to be used in conditions where it actually use it. In other words, it has to be below freezing both day and night. And if it's really cold, that's even better. If I didn't get those conditions, I wouldn't even use it because I just stick with my propane or my wood stove, both of which have been proven. But I think in some circumstances, as an auxiliary heater, this might be beneficial for the way I camp. And my next step is a find, it's a find a way of just getting that hose coming out here and into my trailer. Well, I'm not very good at cooking, but I'm really good at making dust. Now you may ask, why did I put that big hole in the side of my camper, especially when I spent all that money to remove the holes? Well, it's because I have a special purpose for this one, and that is for this little guy. Now, it may be familiar because this is the compartment for the stinky slinky that used to be back here, but I've modified it because if you open it up, you'll see it has a three inch diameter pipe it's about four inches long. Uh, I've also got a 12 volt outlet here and the cord with the male end, which I can put inside my trailer and I can either hook it up directly to the camper's electrical system or I can hook it up to my portable jackery. So all I have to do is put that in like that, seal it up, I haven't sealed it up yet, it's still an experiment, but that's what it would look like when it's ready to roll. But that was only the first hole. I also needed a second one in the closet compartment. This is for the air outlet vent and grill. It didn't come with one, so I made do with one for a clothes dryer. 
to connect the two, I typically use, you know, like this is three inch aluminum ducting, flexible hose. However, because this is a conductor, it would get the inside of this closet really hot. It would kind of turn it into a furnace in here. So what I did is I wrapped it in fiberglass insulation with the aluminum foil on the outside, taped that up, and that should prevent the closet from getting hot where it's the living area, which is where I want the heat. I also had to remove the lower shelf support, which I replaced with a piece of wood. Once installed, I covered it up with carpet and will use the area to hold the jackery. So with the diesel heater heating and the trailer modified to accept it, there's only one thing left. That's a little road trip. I needed a spot where it was cold, desolate, and exposed to the elements. The Badlands of Alberta seemed the perfect spot. So if you're wondering where I store the heater, it's right in here. There's the heater. The heater hose, got my diesel right here strapped in, some tools, everything I need, plus an extension cord and my propane. It's pretty tightly packed in, but everything fits. Well, the sun's just gone down, so it's going to get a little cold out tonight. Below freezing for sure, it's already below freezing. So I've got the diesel heater ready for its first night's test. Anyway, I'm running out of light here. I better work quickly. So here's what I've got. The basic unit. I've got the exhaust pipe, which I had to reroute by the way. The exhaust pipe actually goes straight down. Like you've got to put a hole if you want to use it on the table. You've got to put a hole in your table. Cut. Totally silly. I made a, an elbow for that just so I could use it. Uh, there you can see it's patched up. <laughs> I've got some muffler tape on it because there's already a hole in the pipe. The intake is right here and there's the intake um, uh, filter, air filter. There's actually two air inlets, one for the combustion chamber and a rear grill for fresh air. Plus a heater hose. So, this here is what I made for an inlet to go into my trailer. So one end goes in like that. This goes in there. Now I could clamp those in place, but it's not going anywhere. I'm not too worried about it. So the only other thing I need, and I had to, I had to do this as well, is I put a, a male 12 volt end on the wire. It was just bare wires when I got it. And right there is my 12 volt outlet so that connects it into the trailer and I just got to make sure the wires aren't touching this because it gets quite hot should be ready to go so turn it on and the my uh, screen here is very dim I'm hoping it's going to work yeah it doesn't light up but it is making a noise so that's a good sign and it's hooked up inside I've got it hooked up to my Jackery and I've got it at a hundred percent charge right now so I'm going to be monitoring how much energy it uses uh, just to start up because I know right at the beginning it's quite high I think it uses like 115 watts just to heat it up and then it then it goes down it's not it's a little bit more energy efficient after that but that's the big test i want to see how efficient it is and if i can actually use it with just solar and not have to resort to a generator or something to keep it going because i don't have a lot of light when it's the winter time i only have a few hours i can generate solar power so it has to be efficient to work but let's see how it does it's pumping and I can hear the fan going. Oh, and I can smell the diesel. I better shut the door. 
And by the way, I've got a full uh, tank of diesel, so I'll figure out how much that went down in the morning. You can see my uh, tape is smoking a little bit. It probably will until it hardens in place. Hey, we have ignition. Okay, it's got up to temperature. That's definitely warm. Let's see what's happening inside the camper. Well, it's a little dark in here, but I hope you can see it. Here is the vent, the uh, inlet for the hose. Now, I've already discovered one problem here, and that is it's too hot for the vent cover. It's supposed to be for um, a dryer vent, which I would assume was reasonably, you know, good for high, high temperature or hot, but this is just way too hot. So the flange seems okay. The heat is coming. It's quite hot there, actually, that's good. It started off at zero degrees and I'm at 90, 98%. So it's used up 2% of my battery, but and this is amazing it just went down to five watts but it's bouncing between five and ten watts which is really low that's great now if you listen closely you can probably hear it that click click it's been running for over half an hour and it's just below 10 Celsius. I'd say it's about 8 degrees Celsius, uh, 48 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, one thing I didn't tell you, and I should have, I've only put it on low setting right now. The lowest setting it'll go. I wanted to see how efficient it was before I started baking everything. And by the way, this heater does come with a remote. The lowest setting is 1.2 Hertz, but it is capable of going up to 2.7 Hertz, the max. But for now, I'll just leave it at 1.2 Hertz. And so I would expect if I'm, I'm gonna increase it a little bit more, this is like, I'm actually very comfortable with this. 50, you know, like 50 degrees Fahrenheit or 10 degrees Celsius is very comfortable for me at night. That's what I'd actually prefer. However, I know there's other people that would like to see it higher, you know, like 70 degrees Fahrenheit or 20 degrees Celsius. Well, it's been running well over an hour and I think at least at the low settings, it's not going to get any hotter. It's about 12 degrees Celsius, 52 degrees Fahrenheit. Actually, I'm quite comfortable with it. I could just be wearing a sweater right now and I'd be fine. It's a good sleeping temperature for me. And by the way, I do have a carbon monoxide detector that I've just got plugged in here. So if there is carbon monoxide, I'd know about it. The alarm would go off. All seemed to be going well, but a few hours later, the pump cut out. So when that loud clanging stopped, it woke me up and it was because the heater shut off. So I've just started it up again. It used up quite a bit of power just restarting. The place started stinking, stinking of diesel. I don't know why it shut off, but it did. Anyway, it th I think it's up to normal again. Hopefully now I can get some sleep. So here's the bad news. At about 8, 10 in the morning, the sun hasn't come up yet, it turned itself off. It actually, at 2 o'clock, it died for some reason, but I managed to get it started again. I guess it's back to the drawing board. 
And where does that leave me with this? Well, cold. Let me just see what it is right now. And this is by the, the heater. It says minus 2.2, but I'm gonna do it off the ground. Okay, minus 6.9 Celsius, which is 19.6 degrees Fahrenheit. So it was a pretty cold night. Actually, it warmed up a little because there was some cloud overnight, but it's a little bit frustrating. And I'm cold. Well, it's warm in here again, quiet and comfortable, but the credit goes not to the diesel heater, to the propane one. I used it for a backup. It got it warm again in uh, just a few minutes. And as you can see, the sun's just coming up. It's actually 8.20. 8.20 is sunrise. So yeah, that was a lot of darkness. That means it was, I was trying to use the diesel for, I would say, yeah, I guess that would be about 14 hours. So, sorry guys, but yeah, diesel heater, round one, it's got some challenges. All I was really trying to do is give an honest opinion as I, as I progressed as to how it was doing. And, uh, yeah, there's some things that have to be worked out. Am I giving up on it? No. Am I going to spend a lot more money on it? No. As a matter of fact, I love situations where the results don't go as expected, as it gives me the opportunity to learn and resolve the issues. So I headed back to town to work things out. In a few days, I'll be back in the wilds with the final results of this experiment. And you may be surprised at how it all concluded. So please stay tuned.